Okay, hi, this is Roland Lee. I'm back in my studio again, and we're going to do another step-by-step -step painting today, taking you all the way through from the thumbnail study to the finished painting. And uh, I've got a little uh, photograph that, that I've taken here, and this is of uh, the Cayenta Cliffs uh, near St. George, out by uh, Snow Canyon. And uh, I'm going to use that reference in the studio today, and come up with a painting. So let's take a look at that and see where we're headed with it. And I'm going to say, well, what can I do to make this better? I think that's the thing that we always want to do is say, I, I don't just want to replicate a photograph because the photographs are usually not that great, especially mine. But what can I do to, to make it better, to take out what's not necessary, to to put in what is necessary and, and keep things going. So that's what I'm going to work on uh, today. So I'm going to start with the, with the photograph itself and take a look at it. Now sometimes I'll do some, some sketching right on the photograph. Like I've made some marks here with a charcoal pencil. And um, right in this area here I've lightened this up so that we can see uh, what's happening there with a little bit greater degree of contrast. And so that's what we want to do is, is have dark against light against dark against light, especially in watercolor. So I'm lighting up these edges and I'm saying, well, when I do this, I want there to be a little more contrast in this area. And I've done some darkening up some other areas. And then I come over here to the thumbnail study. And that's where things really take place. Get up here in this thumbnail, which is, when, when you see it, it's, it's just very, very tiny. That's why they call it a thumbnail study. It's really no bigger uh, than my hand right here and uh, so I'll do that study and and I've built some of that contrast in here and there the light areas here here and down across this area I'm going to carry through the finished painting and so this is a real good tool for me I'll set this aside once I start this one right here because I don't need it as much so I'll put it aside and I'll concentrate on this and based on in my reference photo, the, the uh, landscape is going to start way up here. So I really won't have that much sky. So that's not going to be a major element. And I'll simplify some of these other elements as we go. Now you can see that these are very, very light lines that I'm working with. I'm going to have a kind of a strong shadow that's going to start over here. This will be a cast shadow that comes across the, the face of the cliffs behind. And that will give me a nice uh, place to bring these, the, uh, this big juniper tree that's in the foreground and um, bring it up against that. So there's some contrast between the dark and the light there. So I'll just quickly rough in some of these so that I can see where I'm going to go. I don't have to be too particular at this point in drawing some details as you'll see later. But there is a place right here where there's a pretty distinct shadow that comes down. And I've got that right here in my value study. So I'm going to kind of just remind myself of where that is with my value study. And I'll remind myself where these darks are here as well where this cast shadow comes across. So here I have my sketch done, and I've used this as my reference, this little value study right here, and so I've got kind of a good start on this. And I'll lay this down here and get it in position so that we can have everything ready to go. Now I need to get going on some painting. So I'll get my paints ready and we'll get started. Started and I'm going to start right up here with this sky area. I'm going to wet it and I'm only just going to wet it right down to the edge where the cliffs start. Okay, no particular reason. I could go right past this because this is going to be very, very dark. But just to show you that what we do is we wet a certain area and that then becomes a wet into wet area. Any pigment we put into this is going to run, but it's only going to run to the edge and then it's going to stop. So that's work that we're working wet into wet now. I've got some, some yellow ochre out here. I've got some pinks. And I want to leave just kind of some angles that come down into against this cliff back here. 
but very, very light. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of this yellow ochre here down, especially at the bottom, and a little tiny bit of pink up in here, right up to this edge, which will kind of make it nice. Then I'll use a smaller brush and let that settle in for a minute. Let that just sink into the fabric of the paper. Because if we just have the water on the surface, everything runs too much, which we don't want it to do. We want it to be just, uh, um, we want it to run a little bit. That's what wet into wet is all about. But we want to kind of control it. So we're going to dip a little bit now into this blue that's here. And as I put that, this is yellow and it's red on it already. When I touch a little bit of blue into it, it goes a little bit gray. But you still see some of the, the light pink and the light yellow that comes through. Now I will create some direction with this. I want to leave these little bit of lights, but I'm going to pull these blues up here at an angle like this. And these will be the cloud shadows that are coming up against this ridge. And see how that that pulls a line right down into the direction of where we want to go in our composition. Now I'll come down over here, grab a little bit more, and this will be a little stronger blue. And I will give the appearance of clouds uh, or cloud movement by again controlling the direction but this will be the blue of the sky that shows through the clouds. Now I don't want to have a lot of activity up here because I'll have plenty going on down in here but I want some. I want to set the mood. So I'm just going to bring a few of these blue shapes down into it. Darken this area up in here quite a bit so it gives some weight to this corner. This is where our light will come up in this area. So we want some contrast there against the sky where this light cliff comes up. So I'm building that in there right now, but I'm still keeping my direction moving this way. And I like the feel of that pretty well. I think we'll, we'll stop there. Make sure these directional shapes come down just a little bit. Okay, good, I've got a good feeling there now. What I'm going to work on next, while this is drying, is I'm going to lay in some of my uh, lighter uh, values um, down into this area. I want to kind of cover the rest of the painting very quickly in the next 10 minutes or so and get color on all of these areas. These will be my light and middle values. I don't want to get into my darks just yet. We've got to build into that rather slowly. I could bring my photo up and use it for reference, but I don't really need to. Um, I know that these are going to be all pinks and yellows down in there, so why don't I just get started with that. And each time I reach into my palette, I usually like to reach into a different color. So I'll start with the yellow, and this will be a very, very light value. So I'll thin that out quite a bit and start dropping pigment into it to get the pink color of these cliffs. At the same time, we're trying to keep it light, which it will be. And, and, and one thing to note is that watercolor does dry quite a bit lighter than what we think it will. So I'm just going to bring this all over here. This will all be in dark shadow, but just to keep it in the right, and to keep it in the right uh, value range for now, and the right temperature range. Well, I'll just go ahead and put the color there. I don't want there to be a hard edge, but this can be quite a bit darker because it's going to go into the shadows, clear over into this area all the way up. I'm not going to touch that sky yet because I don't want it to run up into it. But I will get pretty close. This nice pink. It'll dry very, very lightly. And now I'm going to touch some orange into this. and um, Just cadmium orange right there. And get it a little bit warmer up into this area where the sun is hitting. 
maybe even a touch of new gamboge up here on this side. But I want to let all these pigments run together. So this is called mingling as they're doing this. Now, right here at the bottom, we see a bead of, of water there. I'm just going to pull that bead down into this area. I don't have too much concern for where the trees are going to go because they're not that light. But I do want to get some tone out down into here and I don't want hard edges. Notice as I add water along this edge and pull this bead down, this is very, very soft towards the bottom. Well, down at the bottom, there's going to be some very interesting, uh, a lot of greens, but I can start to, while it's still wet, I can start to get some of that in down here where they're going to be because it dries so much lighter that uh, we really don't have to diddle with it right now too much. Let's just pull this down to this area. And notice how quickly that we're getting color into this whole area. I'll pick up some quinacridone um, sienna, which is kind of what I use for my, and this right here is quinacridone orange. Okay, and it works well with sepia, or not sepia, with sap green to um, kind of dull the green back just a little bit. As you can see here, it's uh, working together. So I'll just kind of bring some of this along, get some of these greens where the trees are going to be. These will be very soft edges because it's very, very wet still. I'm happy with that. I don't need any hard edges yet, but I do want to get rid of all these whites. And uh, I want to preserve the light, but not necessarily the white. So this gives me some some uh, very nice values in the, in the very light range, not even middle values yet. But we have that variety that we're looking for. Now we need to dull that slightly, picking up some blues here and there, dropping that into it. We don't want to have these just brilliant colors all over just now. So we'll dull some of those back by bringing some blue into these areas. And we'll go much darker in a minute. But this will round things out a little bit. Um, while I'm at it, I'll also bring some blues up into this area, which is going to be a very, very dark shadow area. Much darker than what this is. But I'll try to let some of those pinks show through and start that right now and move that into a little bit darker value range. And this is where the shadow is going to go, clear to this edge and come over. Getting a little bit too blue too quick, so I'll bring some reds into that. And right up here against this edge, a nice place where that shadow will come across. Clear over to here. And I think that's Maybe all we'll do for now, I'll bring a little bit of pink up into this area. Okay. And then I'll just bring a tiny bit of where this shadow's going to go and where this shadow's going to go, just to kind of darken it up into that range and make sure I can see where I'm headed with this. Now, again, I'll come much darker as, as I approach this in a minute, but I want to start to get some textures built up. And already we get a pretty good feel for the direction that we're going here with, um, let me put it up here where you can see it a little bit better. These will be much darker, but we're getting the warms in there. We're getting the lighter values in there. Then we'll come in with the darks. And you can see how these trees are going to just be very, very powerful in there when I bring them in. And I can start to darken those up a little bit right now uh, as we move forward. Now I'll continue to apply these um, lighter values in here. And... I want to be sure that there's a variety uh, of, of color and texture. 
So right down here along the bottom, while this is starting to dry, I'm going to splatter into this area. And I don't know how many of these splatters are going to survive into the final painting. But I want to start building up texture right now down in there. And we'll see a few blossoms start to grow. That's where we put water into it and it runs into pigment that's already starting to settle. Well, guess up. Guess what? That's where I want it to be. I want it to be up in these areas where the there'll be like leaves and textural effects that happen up in there. Now I'm going to move into these darker areas while we can still get a soft edge, meaning that that uh, it, the, this isn't all dry yet. So while it's still drying, I really want to get some color and I want to get some power into it. Just especially over on this shadow side, especially down in here where these trees are going to come up. I may as well just kind of get that going into the darker values right now. We can see how this dark's going to come around. It's going to move up into here and move along the bottom. Each time I reach to my palette, I have some phthalo uh, blue in here, and that's giving me my dark greens. But I'm also tempering that with quinacridone sienna and quinacridone gold over here. So I'll keep moving this direction. And bring these darks into this area and I'm going to leave some light in there because I'm going to have a little tangle of branches that comes through right into this area that I want so I'll just leave all this alone but go ahead and get these other darks as we move back uh, into this area across here as I know those are going to be quite quite dark so let's get those in and I'm still getting some soft edges, but it's starting to harden up just a little bit. Now I'll bring some um, of this sap green over here for these trees. And they'll get just, a, they, they'll be dark, but not dark, dark. So I'll get those laid in right now. Bring these across to this area. And then touch in a little bit of this quinacridone sienna to the mix and darken up this side as it comes across. I want to leave my light coming up here. I want to have some light here, here, and up in this area. So, I'll go ahead and darken up right here along the foreground. And I really want to make sure and I get some sage color in there as well. So I'm going to drop in a little bit of phthalo into the mix and let that just work its way around here and there as it will. And I think I'll touch a little bit of blue, which is the ultramarine blue, forming kind of a gray and pick up some darks in this area and once again we can see how we're starting to build this value pattern here and even when we stick this uh, photograph up here we can see how it's starting to approach uh, the contrast in values that we're looking for but we've all done we've done it very quickly uh, getting to this point so i'm going to let this dry down now just a little bit uh, for about Oh, five minutes or so. That's all it takes. And then I'm going to come back into it and and work my values uh, a little bit darker, into a darker room. It's like I've got a few splatters up into there. Yeah. And I'm going to start uh, right up in this area and kind of darken against this uh, top of the tree there. Then I'll come up here and work on some of these areas to bring these a little more into focus. So then I can balance the distance with the middle ground, with the foreground, to the middle ground, to the distance in terms of values. So right up in here, this is actually uh, dry enough now that I can come up and uh, start to shape the shadows as they approach this tree right here. And hopefully as I work, you'll be able to see the uh, see the contrast of the two as, as we approach each other. So I'll make some reds out here. This is a warm red I'll put over here 
I've got plenty of, of, of cool pinks out here, and this is a, a harsher purple that's out in this area. But I'll still tr try to use a variety of color. So I'll take my ultramarine blue there, my quinacridone coral over here, and as I reach into this shadow area, I'm going to move between the, these, and I'm especially concerned with this area right up here at the bottom. So I figure, well, let's start there then. Let's darken up right down in this area, and then I'm going to pull back away into this area over here. And I'll get that into a darker value range than I'm comfortable with. Reaching into different colors as I go, a little bluer maybe out here on this edge further away, a little warmer as we approach this area down into here. But once again, a very, very uh, dark shadow is going to come across into this area and work its way up to here and then start this, this shadow coming down. We do want to leave a variety of color in there just like we did starting out, but now notice how much more contrast we're getting. And so I'll bring this shadow down here and I'll have to do less talking and more painting <laughs> as we approach this because I've got to get it Right. I'm just going to leave this bead that's forming right there. I'm going to leave that wet bead because I'm going to come back and approach that in just a minute. But right now, let's take care of this shadow edge as it moves out away. Put in a little bit more blue right there. And this will be a softer edge where, where dark meets dark. It'll be softer here. It'll be a harder edge. So I'll just bring this shadow down. And then I've got to see where to shape it so that I get this angle of this shadow coming down here. That will be a cast shadow that comes up into this area, which will be bluer. And I'll soften this side of it. And then bring this shadow clear out over into here. And then there will be a shadow that comes up into this area as well. But I won't finish that. I'll just soften these edges right there where that is. And then I'll come back in and, and do some more detail up in there. But now I'm going to take a finer brush and come back to this edge. Now I'm going to take a dark ultramarine and a little bit of magenta. Use more paint, less pigment, and now I'm going to define the edge of this tree. And I'm going to be very, very cautious because I want to leave some branches sticking out right into here. Let me get rid of that little spot. And you'll see the, uh, the value build right here. I'll leave a few branches. I don't know where we need them the most, but I know we need them there. So now I'll bring this bead down. And once again, you're going to have a hard edge where dark meets light and a soft edge where dark meets dark or any two values are similar for that matter. So I'm going to bring this dark down into here. I'm watching. I'm painting the darks, but I'm watching the lights form right here to give me this edge. And then I'm very careful to leave some highlights as we come down into here, that will give us the feeling that there's some branch structure down in there where a few light areas meet the dark. Now I'll soften up this area right in here because I, once again, dark meets dark, dark meets dark. Those are, those are softer edges. And I've preserved some lights up in here and, and I might need to even lift that a little bit more to create that. But we'll come down now with our dark and we'll create the edge of these trees right down in here. And I'll have a big branch that comes out there from the top of this one. And I'll just kind of doing these at random without drawing them first. Uh, and then I'll just I'll look at them and, and 
rework those as once this dries down and make sure I've got some some nice shapes down in there and I'm just gonna bring this down in here because I want that to come lower and let that just bleed into this this area down into here okay now it's going to get quite dark in this part so I can bring some darks down now start to build that up don't need to but as long as I'm here I'll get some again leave some highlights here and there where those branches are sticking up that's going to be very important okay so I think I've got my right value range for the the shadows in the distant cliffs I'll need to bring some um, shapes down into it to show the form but I've got to move along now and I'm going to move back up into this area right here uh, and work while this is drying. Now what I want to, I want to do two things up in here. This will be kind of a focal point. I want there to be some texture and indication of all of these, um, these various cliffs, but I don't want to do too much. I want a little more detail than this but not as much detail as that. But I'm going to, to do that by picking up a, kind of a light orange and I'm going to do a technique called scumbling where I get the paint clear down here into this part of the brush and lay it on its side. And leave some hard edge. Then I will quickly come back with my brush and clear water and soften some of those edges. Leave a few hard, but soften most of them. Now I can do that various times, but we want these natural. We want it to feel natural. So as we build this this down into here. Um, we're going to take some of these little shapes that we're seeing there and some of these scratches and we're going to build them into, um, I don't know, crevices and cracks and things like that as we go. But right now, this is just kind of a, a an underglaze that's going to come down right from the, the sunny part of this and into the shadow area and build a little bit of texture. We'll come back into that in a minute and, and do some do some work on that. Let's get in our very, very distant part of these cliffs, and they're going to need to be uh, oh, a little bit more gray. We still need them to be red, but we need them to be a dull red. So that would be mixing a yellow, red, and blue together to make kind of a, a purplish gray. And I'm going to come up here and get this shape of this distant cliff and pull some blue into that, dull it back slightly, come along here and pick up this one. Then I'll thin all that out. I'll just continue to push this. Bit. So it's a darker value back there. I mean, we don't want too much contrast there. We don't want it to draw attention to itself. But we want to see that there's a distant cliff. So I'll start to use a variety of colors back in here and get this distant cliff as it comes back far and and delineates kind of the upper edge of where this light is hitting there and the edge of this cliff as it pushes up now you can see how that um, helps this cliff to come forward as we see those distant cliffs I think it's still a little bit too warm so I'll work into some drop in a little bit of blue back there and come over here and do the same thing on this side of this cliff. Use some warms and then soften edges with a little bit of water and bring those edges around. So we still have variety in all of those but it pulls these cliffs forward now like it should and just the way that we want it to. I'll kind of be careful so that I get this right. And I think I'll darken up this side as well. 
over in here so it kind of frames this area and brings this light out. Okay, so now again looking at our, our reference we can see as this painting starts to build, moving from the lightest values to the darkest values. Well, we've got quite a ways to go now. These darks that we had back in there don't seem so dark anymore because watercolor always dries lighter. But the good news is, great, that's, that's the pattern we use in watercolor. Lay down the lights, build up successively darker values, and it starts to build up as it goes. So, uh, I think this is coming along just fine now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up here to this area and I'm going to be careful and start to shape how these cliffs turn and move back into space. I'm going to use a little bit of blue and a little bit of my quinacridone coral to make a, a kind of a purple, a bluish purple and I'm going to delineate a few shapes where they're very, very important, right up in here along this edge and right here along this edge. So I'm going to work on that uh, right now. I'll have this cliff that comes up. It's going to be quite dark and you can see I'm using a smaller brush. This is a number three because I'm working in a smaller area. Now right on the edge it's going to be warm where it turns, so I'll touch a little bit of uh, 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 cadmium red light right up in here, but it's got to be dark, but it's got to be warm right on this edge where that cliff comes over right here. And so I'm going to make some shapes that come out and follow the pattern of that cliff as it comes down. I'll just do a few here, but right here on this edge, this is a very important spot. This is where we see all the detail uh, in our painting is right where light meets dark. So I'm going to get some of these shapes in here and I've got to move quickly now and soften some of these edges. And we always soften the edge towards the light. And that makes it look like it turns and goes down. Now hopefully it's looking that way as we um, work on this on the video. And these lines now are going to follow these shapes. So that's a very critical area there. And um, I'm okay with that. Now that's a form shadow. We're going to have a cast shadow that comes over here that's even darker. That would be this part right up in here. We have this part right here. Now we're going to come back in and get this other part, uh, with, which will be then a form shadow. And try to build a little bit... Um, Oh, a little more texture and, and uh, a little more detail, a little more feeling of, of uh, completion on, this, on these rocks. We don't need too much, but we need some. We need some. To let the viewer feel how these, these cliffs come down. Um, oh, once again, as I make each one of these, I'll soften these edges out here by putting clear water on the side towards the light. That helps, helps us to turn the corner a little bit better with them. So now I've pretty much made my statement. I'm, I'd like to see a little more contrast right in here. So I might 
lift and, and kind of light in the area belonging here. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But at this point, it's, it'd be good to uh, uh, put a little mat on it and see what we've got. So I've got this trial mat that I can put over it right now, and it, it kind of cleans up the edges and helps me to decide, well, how's this looking? Is this going to work or not? Uh, I feel pretty good about it. I think we'll, we'll set this aside now and take a good hard look and come back later. Thank you for joining me uh, on this painting. Uh, I hope you'll come again and, and check out another painting that I do.